Hi, Mary. How are you this morning? Oh, well, look at how beautiful this is. But I do the handmade felt hats, and here's an example. This one is um, Midnight at the Oasis. <laughs> Midnight at the Oasis, <laughs> send your camel to bed. That's Shadows so painting our faces, traces of romance in our head. Is yeah, a felt lace shawl that I it actually was a piece of felt lace that I made many, many years ago, and I finally just got it out of my box because it wasn't very wearable and just as a flat piece. Mm -hmm. So, and so I styled it so it wears nice as a shawl now. I've been a felt maker since um, 1993, so that's a few years. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. I have botanical prints, wow. which is a uh, you know, I go out and collect plants and and um, use them. So it's a natural dye process yeah. where it um, they get laid out on the silk and, uh, and and with mordants and steamed, and that's what you get. Oh, that's gorgeous. I do I dye yarns, especially yarns with aspen leaves when they're turning. Oh, that's they wonderful. The same colors. Oh, that is just so beautiful. Greens and mm. golds. <laughs> These have other natural dyes added in too for the variegated yarns. I like making these things. I love making them and working with them. And it's the materials and the colors and the nature and all of that stuff that just inspires me. And I want to try to make things to put out in the world that other people can enjoy. They're done. And then I, I also use the yarns that I dye mm -hmm. to make things that people can enjoy too. Sure. So I've got a little aspen canary here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at how cute that guy is. So, yeah. so. Actually, this is one of the art scarves. Of the wow. Kind of thing that I'm doing now, which is, um, that is absolutely I beautiful. To take this one was running water and chrysanthemums, um, rai usi, um, the, um, Japanese and Chinese prints. Oh, sure. Are a really good inspiration yeah. for doing this technique with the, um, silk and the wool. To, it's called Nuno felt have silk and wool that laminates together wow. in the process. Wow. I, I, I do have um, some of these scarves that are going to be in the new show, mm -hmm. in the new exhibit, and uh, some of the stained glass ones too. I've, I've got a series of scarves going, and I've got a series of framed tapestries, which are, you know, framed like that one, but it's, um, but they're, they're the ceiling ones was inspired by the Estes Park newspaper. So. My first memory of fiber arts is in first grade. I, I learned in first grade to knit. Yeah. My teacher's name in first and second grade was Mrs. Miss Yarnell. In third and fourth grade, which I didn't tell him, but it was Mrs. Woolsey. <laughs> now we're getting a demonstration on felt making. Like I said. And I brought a little bit of this for the kind of center of it too, because this is a wool and silk mixture, um, a commercial one, but very lovely. Mm -hmm. And I'll use some of that. Bar of soap, ivory soap. Any kind of soap works good. Oh, okay. But in felt making, we um, you start with a raw with an animal fiber. It it, ha it has to be an animal fiber for it to felt to actually felt well because the animal fibers have scales along them. You wet it with um, warmth and soap and different ways you can do that. Uh, the scales open up, you agitate it somehow, and the scales hook together and it turns into felt. I'm making myself some soapy water here. So first, because I thought this would be pretty on the inside, I think I'm gonna start to cover this with some of this. This can be done this simply. What is that ball that you're rolling it around? Oh. It's just a little wooden ball. Mm -hmm. that I have all kinds of things like this in my studio for um, different purposes like this. I'm 
younger <laughs> because I had started getting into natural dyes in the kindergarten and I left that again for many years and then came back and started using the aspen leaves and stuff but um, I just I got and I got looms and started weaving and stuff and, and spinning and so I have spinning wheels and looms and all of that stuff and do that stuff as a hobby from now on to yeah. or as part of you know my work that mm-hmm. but I just once I learned to make felt will not grab a hold of it as well um, if it's real dense instead of if I get it really wetted and dip it in water. It, this is hand spun silk that I made too from some of my hand dyed silk. It's it's really um, one of the things that really intrigues me is starting with you know things that are straight from nature and Making them into something else, <laughs> right? Becoming a creator too, along with God. You know, exactly. Not that I can ever um, compete very well, but I try. <laughs> can get a little skin by being rubbed gently and so on. I don't like that little piece there. I can get rid of it. Okay, and uh, then I found that it's really convenient with something like this done on a fur of horn. Now okay. I'm going to just, I'm going to, this works really well for uh, being able to just rub it for a long time this way. And that's why the form is in there because I want it to have a hollow center. And all. Oh, okay. If it didn't have a hollow center, it would be getting smaller and smaller like a little bee. Oh, okay. sure. Uh-huh. Okay. But it's getting smaller and smaller and the, the wool was like all fluffy around it and I wetted it and put it on but even so it was thicker around it now it's getting thinner and denser because the fibers are hooking together this time of year soon I'm going to be inspired to starting to do the botanical prints again Mm -hmm. and um and natural dyeing because the plants are coming up. And I go outside and I see these leaves that are so beautiful and oh, I gotta put that on a scarf. You know, or, or just even the wonderful colors of the commercial materials and stuff. Sure. But all these natural materials, I, I get inspired just by seeing like this um, fleece that I have, this this um, wool that I have named Twilight Song. Mm-hmm. And then I know that that breed of wool makes a really nice felt for a hat mm-hmm. and so I'm going to make a hat out of it and <laughs> so this is my next hat and it's Twilight Song and um, so how do I manage to um, you know take that bit of nature and of course turn it into this of course music is nature <laughs> so yes this is going to turn into hopefully a little and I've made I've made thousands and thousands of hats that are all over the world and the tapestries and everything too. I have plenty of hats of my own and I love them all. But you know, do I need any more hats than they? Do I need any more scarves? Do I need? Do I have any more? Do I have any wall space to hang anything up? No. But uh, this way, I get to keep on making things that sure. I love to make and. Yeah. And then hopefully bless other people with the enjoyment of them. That's so, wonderful. That's wonderful, that's, Mary. Yeah. That's the first thing. Then the other thing about this gallery is that the people are awesome. Yeah. I, everybody seems to be really loving and forgiving and helpful about supporting each other as mm-hmm. artists. And yeah, look. Remember how the wool was all fluffy? Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's see. Or shall I cut it open? Well, you can make this with any size form that you like. Endless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so then you I rub- can start to rub my little petals here. Uh-huh. And get them felted too. So the felt 
For instance, with the hats, I don't use any kind of sizing or anything like that. See, it's a felt, still, um, yeah. it's, oh. if it's felted really well, it'll mm -hmm. get nice and stiff, and then I put it on a hat block. Okay. Okay, I yeah. have a big collection of hat blocks, and, um, and, and shape it just the way I want it, uh -huh. and let it dry in the shape that I want, and, uh, and it keeps it. Wonderful. Yeah. The hat looks great on you. 